All right. How you doing, mate? Feeling good? I feel all right. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, remember to stay on your on on this side of the screen. Here. Uh, to your left. Here. To your left. Yes. Here. Where do you want me? Here. The other side. There you go. Yes. Okay. That's better. I'll try. All right, that's good. So um, it's been a while, huh? Have you been? Have you been? I've been okay. The audio is a little low. Okay. <sighs> but I'll, you know, I'm deaf, so. Yeah, me too. For <laughs> maybe for different reasons. Good luck to us. <laughs> maybe for different reasons. I used to be a, a rock photographer. Did I ever? Did I ever told you that? I don't think so. Nothing uh, a major or high profile, just my friends. But I didn't take any any precautions. So uh, I, I was, for a lot of the uh, times, I was standing on stage right next to the uh, martial lamps. Ah, uh -huh. Oh, earplugs. Yeah. Just to get the right shot with the amp right on my ear. So I have I'm no amazing. excuse. <laughs> uh -huh. What? I don't have that kind of excuse. <laughs> yeah, I'm amazed I'm, I'm not. It isn't worse, you know, it could be worse. So anyways, I wish we would do this in better circumstances. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, so I want, the reason I wanted to talk to you today was, you know, to uh, talk a little bit about Ken, uh, since you met him, you worked with him. Uh, um, just to, you know, to, uh, to do a little eulogy, if you will, you know, uh, for Ken. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know. and uh, first, I would like to ask you about the man, not the artist. I mean, because a lot of most of the, if you find information about, you know, Ken or any of the artists on the internet, is mainly focused on the, on his skills, on his, on the jobs he has he, he has done over the years. So, uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about about what kind of a person he was? beyond the artist, the artist. Well, I mean, in general, now I wasn't, uh, I wasn't Ken's best friend or anything. We didn't hang around and go to dinner and stuff like that. Uh, but we did wind up in each other's company uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Just through work and a, and a couple of uh, KISS uh, Convention. you know, expos and conventions. Yeah. So, um, so I knew him, uh, you know, uh, a little bit uh, through that. You know, Ken was a regular guy. I, was, I could start out that way, regular guy. Um, there's a lot of uh, other artists that come from different backgrounds, uh, uh, maybe uh, sort of, uh, I don't really know his, his background background that much. I don't know if he was brought up as a poor kid or a middle-class kid or what, I don't have, I really don't know, um, but I know that Ken was, uh, when I met Ken, when I first met Ken, and I called him in to do the famous Destroyer album cover for Kiss, mm -hmm. and he came into the office. I think he was fresh out of the Marines. Really? Wow. Yeah. I don't think he was out very long. Uh, so I... was he, to your knowledge, was he doing artwork throughout that time or was he or was it something he decided to do once once a civilian no i well that's a good question and uh i mean he already had a portfolio and ah. yeah and he, he wasn't out that long so he must have been working before he went into the marines and uh mm -hmm. so he must have been quite young when he started i guess mm -hmm. i mean i don't i don't I, uh, I met Ken in, I met him in 70s, what, late 75 or 6, something like that? And, uh, probably, uh, probably either late 75 or early 76. Probably late 75, I would think, I'm not sure. When did Destroyer came out? What month? I don't know. Um, uh, I'm not, I don't remember exactly. It was probably either March or April. It, March wasn't, or it, April. Wasn't, it didn't come out in the fall. It was during the first. The first well, then I, I may have met him in the very early part of 76, let's say. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, tennis uh, was uh, two years younger than me. He was born in 1945, let's say, mm -hmm. or six. I met him in 76, which 45, right? 46, uh, 56, 66, 70. He was, he was 30, mm -hmm. I guess, where I met him. Maybe he wasn't fresh out of the Marines now that I'm doing the arithmetic. Mm -hmm. He probably was out for a while because I'm assuming, you know, he joined when he was 18, you know, maybe 19, got out two or three years later. So he was probably out a good seven or eight years. Yeah. All right. So um, what made me say he was fresh out of the Marines? I don't know. Something was in my, my brain, but um, it was doesn't that, matter. Was that because of, of his... He's, um, I guess, his, his attitude, his personality that would, that would. Well, he was like a, a regular guy, like I said. Typical, uh, was he a typical New Yorker, would you say? You know, uh, New York is a big place. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fair enough. And uh, a, a typical New Yorker in, in the mind of uh, everyone uh, would be, Somebody from Manhattan. Grumpy. <laughs> or where? Grumpy. <laughs> a little grumpy, yeah, like me. And, uh, or, uh, or from Brooklyn or Queens or the Bronx, one of the outer boroughs. Right. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, uh, there's a certain, maybe a certain attitude you grow up with being from there you know, rubs off on you, forms your personality. Right. And uh, a lot of it is stereotypical. A lot of it is from the movies, but, uh, but some of it is true. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ken was from out in Long Island. So he might as well have been from New Jersey or Connecticut. Mm -hmm. It's just not the same. It's not the same. So he, I don't, I wouldn't call him a typical New Yorker in that sense. No, he was just a, but he was a regular guy. By that, I mean, he didn't seem spoiled or affected. Uh, he wasn't a dilettante. Uh, he was a hardworking, down to earth artist. And he was a, as you and I discussed this a couple of times, Claudio, he was a, a working artist. He was, a, uh, you know, not a, a delicate, you know, uh, dilettante. He was, he was a tough working artist. He would you get the job, you go home, you do that job, you deliver the job on time and uh, you, you take directions from the client. You're, you're a journeyman, you're a craftsman, you're an artist, that, that type of guy. It's funny. You looked at it that way. It's funny that you, you pointed out that distinction because the the uh, the, stereo, the, uh, the stereotype of the eccentric, kind of uh, kind of crazy aloof type of artist, it's something that came about in the 20th century. Before that, all artists were working artists, and they would have massive amount of commissions to to deliver, and they usually would come from you know poor backgrounds, and they would take it under the wing of a rich person that would you know hire them either just occasionally or full, on a full-time basis. So I think that that conception of the artist being kind of hippie mentality, it's something that is relatively new in the art history. Yeah. I think. yeah. And he, he wasn't like that. He, he's like, uh, like you say, he was a craftsman. He did his job. Um, he was just like a, a, a carpenter that would come into your house and build a cabinet for you or according to some specifications. Right, he was that kind of person, okay. Yeah, I think so, I think so. I mean, he was an artist, Let's. he was an artist and he had a great sense of aesthetic and then, you know, uh, uh, but, but, but he, he, didn't, he didn't hold himself to be some sort of delicate flower, you know. Right, I get it, yeah. all right. And you yeah. told me that- yeah, Kind of a tough, uh, he, he, he seemed like uh, he had a tough demeanor, but he wasn't. I think down deep he wasn't. You know, he was, he was and you told me recently that uh, you uh, you recently, well, recently, maybe in the past ten years, you had a little road trip with him. Uh, you went to a convention, drove together. Oh yeah, uh, there was a convention down in sort of South Central New Jersey, which is not not real close to Manhattan. So uh, 
I was invited and I decided to go. I packed up my stuff, such as it is. You know, I could put it under one arm and another arm and, and carry it. Um, and uh, I got a ride down there from a, a friend in my neighborhood. He just, I was telling him where I had to go and I was wondering how I was going to get there and get back. And uh, he just said, I'll drive you. I said, great. But he, he drove me, but he went home. So I, I still had to get home. Right. So I, I set up my stuff and it was right next to Ken. And I knew Ken from where I, you know, obviously. And uh, we did the convention, but uh, while talking to Ken uh, during the day, Ken said, uh, I'll drop you off. I'll, I'll bring you back to Manhattan. I have to go on my way to Long Island. I could just cut through Manhattan and the bridge and the tunnel, whatever, whatever route he had in his mind. And I said, oh, thank you very much. So that, that relieved me of a, a little bit of stress that day. You know, I'm, I'm saying I went to the convention with my stuff under both arms, <laughs> spread it out on the table. That was it. Ken, Ken has a, a freaking, uh, you know, Silverado or something that I, he drives, a big SUV, uh -huh. uh, packed with trunks. He's a, he was a professional convention goer at this point. Uh, I saw his booth. So in, and he, looked, yeah. he was very, very... Uh, yeah, and it depends on what kind of a show it was and and etc. But he had different setups for different kinds of shows. Uh -huh. In other words, for chiller theater, chiller whatever convention that is, he would have a certain thing. And for Kiss, he would do a certain thing. And so he had these trunks and banners and stuff. And it was all organized and he could pull it out and unfold it and clip clop, clip clop, boom, boom, boom. And that goes in that trunk and that goes in that trunk, you know, dum, 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 dum. and I was just haphazard. <laughs> I've been to a few conventions, but he, but Ken told me that he made, uh, I think at least 50% of his income from conventions. Really? Wow. 50%. Wow. So he, he, that's why he was professionally uh, organized for conventions. He was all set up for that. That was basically his business. Well, any of us that has more than one high profile piece of artwork that everybody knows should con consider uh, himself lucky. And he had way more than one. Yeah. So, and that's, uh, I, I would say that's the ultimate goal for any artist to have a piece that everybody could recognize. And that's the hardest part. I mean, being, being good at your craft is one thing, but then having a certain notori notoriety for your work, it's an entirely different game that not everybody has the luck. I, I, I have the luck, to, the luck to have one piece that is <laughs> internationally recognizable. I uh, hope to get more eventually. But, uh, but Ken was at that level in which he was, he was recognized uh, as a you know, high profile artist. It's yeah. Pieces that were iconic in, the, in, in, in pop culture, you know? Sure, yeah. And uh, we're, we were, the convention was waning and coming close to uh, ending. And uh, this young lady, Michelle, I don't know if you know her, uh, Michelle Pava. No, and she's a Kiss fan, and but but she she gets involved in in uh, Kiss things, and uh, Kiss things. She even threw a, a mini Kiss Christmas party one time here in Manhattan, Christmas, uh, which was fun. But uh, she had um, she had a friend, I don't know who it was, a, a, a young guy, at the convention, and then she had met. Um, I told you this on the phone. Now, what's his name again? The original singer for Journey? Um, Robert Fleischman. Yes, Robert Fleischman. So she had Fleischman that she met. So there was a, those three, and then there was Ken and myself, and she invited Ken and me to a dinner after the convention, someplace right around near where the convention was being held. So uh, we said, well, all right. So uh, we, we had dinner, and uh, it was very pleasant, a lot of fun. Uh, they they asked us some questions. Uh, Robert was very nice. I had never met him before. Uh, Robert, Robert is a gentleman. I, I like him. He's a what? He's a gentleman. I like him. A gentleman, yeah. He, he, very nice guy. He was doing, he showed me some of his artwork. 
You ever see that? Sorry? He showed me some of his artwork. No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, it's kind of like collage-y hmm. wow. things that overlap, very sort of rich. And he just, he takes objects that he doesn't create with his hands, but that he finds. And he puts it together. And it's sort of like a collage, but he doesn't use a computer. And I found it very interesting and very well done and tasteful and artistic. He had, he had ability, you know, in his, and I said, Robert, you ought to invest in Adobe Photoshop because this, what you're doing is made for that. Is made for that. What you're doing is really something that somebody else would be doing on Photoshop, but you're, you're struggling with physical things, objects trying to put it together. I said, man, you're gonna you flip out when you learn how to use Photoshop. You would flip out the techniques and whatever. But he kind of listened to me politely, but I could see he wasn't gonna ever do it. <laughs> and uh, that's okay. It's very hard. He a nice dinner. It's very hard for a lot of people to make the jump from. Uh, from yeah, yeah, it was hard for me. Yeah. It was hard for me. So uh, uh, the dinner was over and I got into Ken's uh, car and we drove back to New York. So we had a nice a nice trip back to New York and we were probably the most uh, lengthy, you know, uh, conversation that we had. I don't remember what we talked about. Uh, a lot of it was just life and stuff, you know, uh, I found out Ken was very interested in uh, the history of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, Ken, somebody just gave me an entire 12 VHS set that was probably produced Channel 13 or, you know, one of those educational stations, uh, law, the whole history of the Second World War. I said, it's comprehensive. It's seven hours long probably i don't know and i said it's yours if you want it do you have a a tape player because it was you know nobody had a tape player anymore he said yeah yeah i'll take it so when he dropped me off at my place in manhattan i ran upstairs and i got them and i brought them down and i said here you go oh, that's very nice you know thank you for the thank you for the ride so uh uh, that was our, our lovely uh, ride back to Manhattan. It was, I, it was very nice. Uh, and, uh, you know, the other thing about Ken being a professional, and he was, he was a, a real professional. He didn't complain. And, you know, we made demands on him sometimes. Uh, the worst one being he completed the destroyer painting. And then they dropped the bomb on us and said, you got to do it again. Can you imagine? All that work, and it was not something that you toss off. No, I know, but uh, I don't know if we touched this uh, um, uh, point on, on the original Destroyer episode, but was C paid twice or, or not? No. No? No. I think the idea was that we gave him more money than he's ever seen in his life by far. So he didn't even make a peep. He just did it again. Right. Okay. Then I guess the money, the money would, would, would cover it. Was that. It was just enough. Yeah. And right. uh, okay. so like I say, he didn't complain. He just uh, bit the bullet. I'm sure it wasn't the happiest news he ever got in his life, but you know, by but he way, did it. By the way, that original brown painting has never been seen ever. The one that 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 is around that it was used for the re-edition of Destroyer is something he did recently. It's oh. new. Oh, the, the original one, the one that you said it was completed and discarded, that has never surfaced ever. The brown, the brown, the brown one, the the never brown surfaced. that the brown. There is a brown one. That, that is in the cover of the Destroyer uh, Resurrected, which was a remix. Yeah, that was the first one he did. But it's not the original, it's new. It's something he did re in recent years. Well, that's confusing to me. Uh, it is confusing and you know how you can tell because the signature. Oh. It doesn't have the original Ken Kelly signature that looked like a W, right? Yeah. This yeah. one says Ken Kelly and it's very readable, Ken Kelly. Okay. And uh, it doesn't look like something was done in the 70s. But I mean, 
Can you compare, can you can still compare them somewhere? What do you mean? Can you compare the one that's missing and the one that you say is new? Are there digital copies of it somewhere? They can put them side by side on the screen and look at them? You said the signature is different. It's different from the signature he used to do in every well, page. I, see them, I want to see them side by side to see what's different. No, but that's what I mean. The original one doesn't exist. There's no... There's, there's got to be a copy of it, a photo of it. I don't know what to tell you. A lot of people have, po have pointed out, and I think they're right, that the, the brown painting that is around, that everybody has seen, and they, act, they eventually used it, it's not the original. It's a reproduction that Ken did in the past 10 years. It's, it's a painting, and it's done on canvas, just like Ken did all of his other work. It's not digital, but it's not. He, he painted on like illustration board most of the time. By the way, and uh, and yeah, I know, and and uh, also there is the one that that hit they shown. It was the one that they shown in a documentary because they did show a brown version with the alive costumes in a documentary. It wasn't a full painting; it was sketched out. There is one that is also sketched out, and uh, there's video of Gene showing it. It's like about this big sketch. So the, the original brown one, I personally have never seen it. If it's around, if it's around I, I haven't seen it. I've seen pictures of it not that long ago. But that's not the original, Dennis. It looks like the original to me. Then he copied it to the letter, but it doesn't, it doesn't, oh, have, the, yeah. it doesn't have the same texture as, as the original. It looks new. It looks like it was done recently. There must be something in between there because uh, this is all quite confusing. Wait, wait, wait! Give me, give me one second. I have it right here. Yeah. There's been a lot of discussions and controversy about this. That's why I'm pointing it out. Not, I'm not, I'm not trying to, to. Yeah, uh, a lot of screwy stuff that people say out there. Look. Yeah. Right, but look at the signature. Yeah. It says Ken Kelly. Oh, that's weird. It is weird, right? Yeah. And the date says, wait, let me get my glasses. Because he always put the date on the on the signature, like Boris Vallejo and and, and Frank Frazetta. It says Ken Kelly, it says 75. But why is the signature different than the original one? I don't know. You know what I mean? That's Crazy. His original signature is very different. Wait, I think I have his book here somewhere. Um, where is it? Ah, uh, it. There it is. Yeah, see, that's his original signature. The way he signed all his paintings back in the day. Yeah, but anything else different? So, if this is from from 1975, why is the signature different? Oh yeah, this is that's a different picture. See, it's not. This is something he did recently. Oh, uh, that's that's the um, that's the brown. Maybe it wasn't signed back in the day, and he signed it now. Uh, you see Ace's face? Yeah, it's very. It looks weird. Look at his face there. See, it's a different different painting. It is a different painting. Yeah, it is a different painting. Yeah, yeah. So could it be, wait a minute. That's the be, one uh, going right by Ace's face because it's because it's such a weird face that he did. So and he, improved, we, he improved it the second time around for the final. But that's the one we used to call Brown. Wait a minute. Is it possible that he painted over? It is. That the original doesn't exist anymore? And it's that's why possible. Do you have his book? I do have his book. And is that, is it there? Wait, I do have his book. Fortunately, I got a copy um, here. That's it. Um, now, I think he has brown in that one. Doesn't he have both of them in there? And it's signed. Yeah, <laughs> very good. 
Very good. Now, wait, give me a second. Let me take the dust cover off because it's not very practical to. Uh... I wonder if my book is signed. <laughs> I wonder if my copy is signed. I haven't looked at it in a long time. I'm looking for it here. Let's see. Let's because see. let me tell you something, Claudio. Yeah. The, the faces and, the, and what have you on that one you showed me is like the one we call brown. However, yeah. the color, the overall coloring is different. He's changed it to the blue, like the final. So everything is totally confusing to me. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. It's very strange. I think he was always screwing around with stuff, I think. You think? Yeah. OK, you know what? Can you believe that Destroyer is not in this book? Only Love Gun. Oh. My, my kiss story. I can't believe it. It's not here. It's only Love Gun. The kiss chapter. Oh, I probably. I think he feels that Love Gun was more of his creation. Destroyer is not here. Wow. I'm looking for, still looking for it. I don't see it. It's not here. Now oh, wait. Here, here. Is. Oh, there's you. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote the foreword to the book. Right. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Or whatever. Bill O'Coin wrote the introduction, and I wrote the foreword. There it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so uh, going back to, we'll, we'll solve that mystery some other day. I don't think we'll solve it today. Yeah, well, <laughs> some detective work. So but, uh, I have 10 minutes left. I don't know why Zoom is chopping this, giving us a, a deadline, but we have like nine minutes and a half left. So uh, just to, uh, to round up, um, tell me a little bit about the kind of artist he was, not technically, but his sensibility, his, uh, the way he would approach a, a piece whenever you would explain him what to do, if you, if you can. Well, he, he, he seemed to get everything when I was trying to explain to him what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean by that? He, uh, he didn't really have to ask me a lot of questions. Um, of course, I was very careful to be clear uh, all, all the years of my experience as an art director. Sometimes I'm giving out an assignment to a photographer or whoever, and I think I've covered every detail. Hmm. And then I get the thing back and it's like, what the hell did he do? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I guess he did what I said, but you know, it's like, a mystery to me how they, uh, they would deliver that. But so I became very, very careful in my uh, descriptions and when I would hand out assignments and especially to Ken, because I knew it was a, a laborious process. It's a painting. And uh, um, so uh, he understood everything I said. He, he was uh, very savvy. Uh, mentally, he could picture what I was what I was talking about. Uh, he had been around enough, you know, he just, he just had it. He just had it. Hmm. He didn't need, I didn't need to hold his hand too much. Uh, uh, he got it. He's, he, when he described Destroyer uh, to a lot of people, he said, this was all Dennis. He said, I was only the mechanic on the job as the way he put it. And uh, he didn't give himself nearly enough credit on that. I know all you, that's not true, Ken. You just followed my instructions but you still had to create it with your wonderful artistic ability. So I would always pull him back from that. He gave me, you know, too much credit, but, but then when he went to love gun, he would say, that was mostly me, you know, on destroyer. It was mostly Dennis, but love gun. It was really mostly me. And then I would have to pull him back on that a little bit and say, well, that's not entirely true. Ken. I, I gave you the idea of uh, the concept you know, of the adoring women at their feet and they were larger than life and etc. I said, of course, we changed, we changed the feeling from a grungy alleyway uh, to a palace. And, uh, you know, that, that made all the difference. So 
that was a good a good thing. Uh, but as an artist, uh, he was he was perfection to work with because uh, he never uh, gave me any uh, any uh, negative feedback on on anything I was saying to him. He simply listened and produced. He was a really a delight. Hmm. I wish yeah. I'd known him better. I, I met him briefly a, a few years back in Miami and uh, it was chaos. There was a lot of people there. It was a, con a convention and uh, it wasn't even a convention. It was a, a, a rock show oh. was a stage there. So his booth was on the side of the venue along with, um, with Lydia Chris. Lydia Chris was there, uh, Bob Kulik was there. Uh, the uh, Bill O'Coin estate was there as well. There were a bunch of kiss related personalities and Ken was one of them. So I, I approached him and I told him I was an artist and uh, I was, you know, admired him a lot. And uh, he was very gracious, have a picture with me and uh, uh, I got his book, but uh, that was it. I wish I had more time to talk to him, but it didn't happen. So it's always the way it is in life and you, know, you never know. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I was quite shocked to hear of his passing. Uh, I, you know, I never, I hadn't talked to him in uh, probably two years. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I did reach out to him a couple of times, didn't get any answer. That's what I, you know, I feel bad now because uh, um, for people watching this, I tried to reach out to Ken to do a little podcast with him, an interview about not just about his work in Kiss, for Kiss, sorry. But in general, just his, uh, his book covers, his Conan covers, his Man of War album covers. But I guess he wasn't having a good time recently and never got back to me. And when he finally got back to me, he only said, not at this time. So I, I don't know. I don't know what was, what was going Say on. Say that again, uh, Claudio. When he finally got back to you, what? When he finally got back to me, he said, yeah. not at this time. Meaning he wasn't, oh. he didn't want to talk to anybody. Not, oh, you wanted to interview him a little bit? I wanted to talk to him, yes. I wanted just to talk to him. He said not, a, not at this time, yeah, or not a good time, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I feel bad now because I, who knows what he was going through, uh, and, you know. The, the yeah, who knows is right. I know he, he was having a hard time. His wife was sick. And uh, she was sick for many years. Uh, but not direly ill, I don't think, but sick. But then she did pass. Yeah. Uh, I guess a couple of years ago, only. Maybe three, two or three. Mm. And that may have really uh, hurt Ken quite a bit. I don't, you know. And yeah, I can understand. I'm only speculating, I don't know. No, I can understand that. I mean, uh, for some of us, our wife is really our better half. <laughs> You know, uh, uh, while while way back in the day, after Ken had done, uh, um, I guess it was you know in between or right after he had, had done uh, Destroyer, uh, we had a, a young lady who worked in our office who was a friend of mine. She was also my neighbor up here in my neighborhood. Her and her husband they were friends of ours, and uh, me and my wife would go across the street to their apartment have dinner we'd go out and we were, we were friends she contacted ken to do a painting to she, she uh, uh commissioned a painting uh to give to her husband as a gift yeah you told me that yeah yeah and uh and it was great at the time they had they had two uh, old english sheepdogs you know the what they look like right yeah. Like uh, Paul McCartney's dog, uh, Martha. Mm -hmm. uh, they're big, shaggy, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dog. So she, they had two of them. And um, uh, she wanted to give her husband a gift. So uh, I guess she was uh, enthralled with that uh, destroyer painting. And so just she hired Ken. And uh, so I don't know whose idea it was, but you know the Silver Warrior by uh, Frank Frazetta? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one with the uh, polar bears. Polar bears pulling the chariot. Yeah, great painting. One of his, one of his three, best. Top three, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Uh, um. So she had this thing done, and there's her, her husband Stuart in a chariot 
<laughs> being pulled by these two old English sheepdogs. And uh, Ken, Ken did a, like, it was amazing. I mean, the painting was only, you know, maybe 16, 20, 14, 17, not huge, but fantastic. Fantastic. He captured Stuart's face. The dogs are going furiously. The fur is flying. It was, I wish I had a copy of it. And someday I'm going to try to contact Stuart. It may not be easy because we lost touch. But if he has a copy, I'd love to see that painting again. Well, I just remember. A, just, a, just a picture with the phone, with, with their phone would be enough just to see it, you know? It was, it was really fun. And uh, he did it so well, you know? Mm. And what a gift, what a gift to get, you know? Right. So, yeah. You know. Well, you know what? Uh, on a personal note, I have to say that I was, I was really down the day uh, I found out about Ken's uh, passing. I mean, he, he, uh, he's one of my, he was one of my favorite artists um, growing up. And um, uh, also for Zeta, I mean, their, their styles were very similar. You know, and they were related. Uh, uh, he, he, he idolized Frank Rosetta. Yeah. Did he ever talk about him? About his... Uh... You know, he said he, uh, he knew Frank. Uh, uh, he almost referred to him as Uncle Frank, but he was really his cousin through marriage. Right. So he wasn't even a blood relative. It was, you know, uh, Frank's wife was related to Ken. Cousin. Uh, cousin. cousin. Cousin, right, okay. Yeah. And uh, Frank was much older, you know? Yeah, sure, yeah. Frank Frank was in the, uh, uh, well, he was much older, yeah. He was, I, I probably, he was probably in his 50s in the mid-70s, probably. Or mid-40s, maybe. When? In the 70s. In the, yeah, could, yeah right. very well, very well be. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you look at his history and his legacy and what he was doing, he, he, he goes way back, way mm -hmm. back. Yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, Frank was actually an excellent, uh, accomplished artist, even as a young guy. He, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Already really good. No, he was a, to, me, to me, Frank transcended the pop culture in which he was immersed. He was, to me, He's right up to the level of the, of the big names in history. Of, no you know. question. And, and not only, he was, he was so great in, in uh, different areas. He was, he could do funny little cartoons and bring life to little cute characters. Yeah. And, and pen and ink. And simple, exquisite little line drawing. Then he could go deeper into the superhero black and white ink, inking like in comic strip panels. And he did that like, oh, great. Then he ghost scripted for Al Cap and little Abner. So he had to copy those characters and emulate Al Cap style. I mean, and he did it, you know, perfectly. I and mean, then he became a fantasy artist, which, you know. And he was totally, totally, totally self-taught. He didn't never yes. go to art school. Yes, yes, yes. And you read interviews by him, it's pretty fascinating. Uh, his, his take on things. He was a tough guy. Yes, he was. He was. He was also a marine. Mm -hmm. He was a tough guy. And, uh, so anyway, let's let's wrap this up. Um, we will miss Ken. He was one of the greatest and um, uh, one of the last of the old school. You know. I would say so. There are very few left. I would say so. So, um, but. His legacy still lives in uh, artists like me and some other artists that took That's about what I was going to say, and, and, uh, and people like me who, who uh, recognized his ability and uh, was able to, you know, to hire him and, and commission him to do these uh, great works that he did. Well, I'm glad you found him. I, and, and how did I find him? On the silliest, <laughs> creepy comic book cover that... Really, when you look at it and compare it to what he did later, it was a minor work, but yet, I'm telling you, I saw something in it. I did. I saw something in it. I said, he's, he's my man. If he could do a human being instead of a robot, I want him. And just uh, the, the kind of a, a faithful way in which you find him, because you wanted to hire Frank first. And then you were like... Stuck on Frank. 
and then you were lost. Say, so what the hell do I do? Just really walk, lost. Walk into the. I, 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 I was nervous and scared. I had this big project. Kiss is about ready to explode on the world stage. I knew it. All these people, you think about all the people working in the offices, the advertising agency where I work, a coin, the management company, all those people working. And it's all KISS, all KISS centric. And, and here I am, that I, you know, I have to, I have to produce uh, the, his next album cover, their next album cover. And it better goddamn be good. It better be good. Suppose it sucked. It can't suck. And I can't get Frank, who I, I knew that was slam dunk great. At least I thought. I mean, who, maybe Frank would have disappointed me. You never know. But I doubt it. But uh, like you said, I was scared. I was nervous. And I didn't know what to do. And I'm wandering around <laughs> the streets. <laughs> Well, I headed for the comic book store, but I didn't know what I was doing there. Really. And you found Frank's cousins. <laughs> what do you? That's. I crazy. mean, Ken told me that uh, there was a there was a barbecue they had, and Frank attended. He was there. Uh, you know, a summertime family get together thing. And Ken was trying to pick Frank's brain. And he, uh, Ken was telling me, he said, "I was asking Frank." How did you do that? Some detail on a painting, you know, that, that was impressing. Ken, how did you do that bracelet on the girl, the lighting and the, how did you get the, you know? And uh, Frank wouldn't give him one no. <laughs> tilla of advice or a hint of how he did it. He wouldn't do it. Wow. Wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> he wow. said he kept the secrets to himself. Well, I, I can understand that. I mean, I keep, I'm, I'm pretty generous with my knowledge, but there's some things I don't, I won't, I won't, I won't tell. <laughs> you probably saw Ken as a competition. <laughs> All right, and on, on that note, we're wrapping up. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, for thank you for everything up there in heaven, I'm sure. And uh, uh, like you say, his legacy uh, will live on. Yeah. Thank you, Dennis. So long, my pleasure.